To own a Lamborghini is the ultimate dream for many car enthusiasts. The luxury sports car maker has been crafting iconic vehicles since 1963, and its designs have hung on the bedroom walls of bullish teens for generations since. But what is it about Lamborghinis that makes them so admired, and how have they evolved throughout the years? This is the evolution of Lamborghini. Despite its modern day status as a symbol of wealth, luxury, and speed, Lamborghini actually has quite a humble origin story. Named after its founder, Ferruccio Lamborghini, the company started out by making, of all things, tractors. Mr. Lamborghini had served in the Italian Royal Air Force as a mechanic during World War II, and after the war, he used his skills to open a repair shop. After acquiring surplus military units, Ferruccio converted them into tractors and made a lucrative business out of it. In 1959, production started for a tractor that some would refer to as the great-grandfather of all Lamborghini vehicles, the DLA 35 Super. It was powered by Lamborghini's 2.2-liter three-cylinder diesel engine and could reach a top speed of 15 miles per hour. In total, 117 of these beautiful beasts were made. So, if you hear a farmer say that he is a Lamborghini, you better believe him. But then Ferruccio also started exploring his real passion with sports cars. Ferruccio owned a Ferrari 250 GT back then, and funnily enough, if it hadn't been for Ferrari's rude customer service and disapproving attitude, Lamborghini sports cars may never have even existed. That's because when Lamborghini complained to Ferrari about the performance of his clutch and asked for a replacement, his fellow Italian insulted him and told him it was the driver to blame, not the vehicle. According to one source, Enzo Ferrari himself said something along the lines of, you're just a silly tractor manufacturer, how could you possibly know anything about sports cars? Well, not long after that encounter, Lamborghini unveiled his first official sports car in May 1964, a very capable rival to Ferrari the Lamborghini 350 GT. The 350 GT wasn't quite finished when it debuted at the Turin Auto Show. In fact, the designers had to place a bunch of bricks where the engine should have been and kept the hood shut the entire time. A 3.5 liter V12 was eventually put in place though, reaching a top speed of 155 miles per hour and going from zero to 60 miles per hour in 6.8 seconds wasn't too bad at all in the mid-1960s. Despite its great performance, Ferruccio's sights were not set on making a race car, but rather a smoothly driving road car, like the Ferrari he owned. In total, 120 units were made and the Lamborghini was sold for $18,000 at launch. If you can find one in pristine condition today, you can expect to pay a lot more than that. In fact, in 2015, a rare and exquisitely restored 350 GT was sold at auction for a whopping $935,000. The all-important sequel to the 350 GT was the Lamborghini 400 GT 2 Plus 2, released in 1966. It had room for four people as opposed to just two and featured a more powerful 3.9-liter V12 engine. As a result, it could hit a top speed of 168 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds. In total, 250 units were made with a cost of $14,750 at launch. By the mid to late 60s, Lamborghini had gained plenty of recognition as a serious manufacturer of quality sports cars. They were not just a one-hit wonder, the Raging Bull was here to stay. Fun fact! The famous logo was apparently chosen because Ferruccio Lamborghini was a Taurus as a zodiac sign. He also attended bullfights regularly and thought it was the perfect image to use as his company logo. And that logo was certainly getting noticed. In 1969, production started for the legendary Lamborghini Miura. Many highly influential people had a Lamborghini Miura when it came out during the same era as the 400 GT. Rod Stewart, Elton John and Frank Sinatra all owned one. At the time, Sinatra was quoted as saying, you buy a Ferrari when you want to be somebody, you buy a Lamborghini when you are somebody. 
You can bet Ferruccio Lamborghini had a big smile on his face hearing those words. The Miura was a two-seater that had a top speed of 177 miles per hour, making it the fastest production car in the world. It could accelerate from zero to 60 in just 6.5 seconds. 338 original Lamborghini Miuras were produced up until 1971, each costing $20,000. If you want to buy a Miura today, you'll have to pay about 100 times that amount. Fun fact, the name Miura also doubled down on the bull theme, as Miura is a breed of Spanish fighting bull. 1967 saw one of several concept cars designed by Lamborghini, named the Lamborghini Marzal. It was a four-passenger car with a two-liter straight-six engine. It maxed out at 140 miles per hour and could go from zero to 60 in seven seconds. Only one prototype of the Marzal was ever built. Mr. Lamborghini later stated that the Marzal was never intended as a production car, but rather as a form of advertising. He said, if you present a car like the Marzal at automobile shows such as Geneve, Turin, and Frankfurt, all the magazines report on the first page about it. You would rather spend 100 million lire for building such an automobile, which is still less expensive than paying for all the advertising. That would cost almost a billion lire. So it compensates in any case to build such a throwaway car. In 2011, this so-called throwaway car was sold for $1.8 million. Next on the production line between 1968 and 1970 was the four-seater Lamborghini Islero. It was built to replace the 400 GT, though it retained the same engine and had a slightly lower top speed and marginally improved acceleration, 225 units were made and it was sold for $18,000. The Islero got its name for a Miura bull that killed a famous matador named Manuel Rodriguez in 1947. Meanwhile, the car's design was kept conservative and in line with the 400 GT's look, unlike this next entry. Also launched in 1968 was the Lamborghini Espada, which didn't have the typical sports car look. The car's sharp edges suited its name, with Espada being the Spanish word for sword. It housed the same V12 engine as its sisters, meaning that the four-seat Grand Touring Coupe was not the fastest, but it could still reach 155 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. It had a price tag of $21,000 and over a decade, 1,200 units were built, making it easily the most produced Lamborghini so far. When it came time to replace the Islero in 1970, Rather than just giving it a redesign, Lamborghini opted to make the Jarama instead. Just like the Espada, the car doesn't look like the typical Lamborghini. You've probably noticed by now that the Italian car company likes to give its vehicles Spanish names and to keep the bull theme going. And this car was no different. The Jarama was intended to recall the fighting bulls bred in the Jarama River area in Spain, as opposed to the Jarama racetrack of the same name located in Madrid. The car was powered by the same 3.9-liter Lamborghini V12 engine used in the Islero and Espada, giving it a top speed of 162 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds. 328 Jarama units were built, and it had a launch price of $22,500. While this price may not seem like a lot, adjusted for inflation, it would be $150,000 today. In 1971, Ferruccio Lamborghini surprised the world with the new Lamborghini Miura. In addition to subtle visual updates, the SV had a revamped engine and 385 horsepower, whereas the original Miura had 370 horsepower. This translated to a top speed of 186 miles per hour, making it even faster than the original. The acceleration was also improved. It could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 5.8 seconds. The car was sold for $21,000. The SV was also the last and rarest model in the Miura lineup, as only 150 of them were ever made. If we compare all the Lamborghinis so far, we can see that the Miura SV is not only the fastest car, but also the quickest. Surprisingly, it wasn't even the most expensive car. If you want to own a low-mileage Miura SV today, be prepared to rob a bank, because the price tag is $3.2 million. In 1972, Ferruccio Lamborghini sold his controlling shares to George Henry Rossetti, a wealthy Swiss businessman and a friend of Lamborghini. Rossetti bought the shares for $600,000. In 
In December 2020, those shares would be worth a whopping $6 billion. Under new ownership, the Lamborghini company switched things up by releasing a 2.5-liter V8 model. Named the Lamborghini Uraco, which is a Spanish slang word meaning little bull. The four-passenger sports car was priced at $22,500 and intended to be a more affordable alternative to the Ferrari Dino and Maserati Maroc. It could reach a top speed of 149 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. Besides the 2.5-liter V8 model, two- and three-liter models of the car were also made available with either worse or better top speeds and acceleration times. In total, 776 Uracos were built over a period of seven years. Next, the Lamborghini company started working on a successor to the Miura in 1974. The result was the Lamborghini Countach, which, oddly enough, was not named after a bull or an area of Spain. The name actually came from an expression made by a guard in his local dialect when he saw the design of the new car. Its equivalent in English would be something like, wow. And it's easy to understand why he had this reaction. The wedge-shaped Lamborghini had a completely different design than any other car on the market. It also was the first production car to incorporate scissor doors. Returning to the 3.9-liter V12 engine, the Countach caused a few gasped expressions with its speed and acceleration, too. It could reach 187 miles per hour and accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 5 seconds, making it much faster and quicker than the Miura. The Countach wasn't cheap, though. It was the first Lamborghini to cost over $50,000. It became the longest-running production car, with 1,983 units made over 16 years. Emerging from the shadows in 1976 was the Lamborghini Silhouette. It replaced the Uraco, with a Targa roof, basically making it semi-convertible. It had a 3-liter V8 engine, making it faster and quicker than the Uraco, but also more expensive. The Silhouette wasn't a success, though. The plan was to win over the U.S. market, but that never happened. In three years, only 55 units were made. With that amount, they wouldn't even win over the North Pole market. The silhouette wasn't the only bad thing that happened to the company. Lamborghini also had internal problems because of the change in ownership, and to make matters worse, in the 1970s, there was an oil crisis, skyrocketing oil prices. As a consequence, Lamborghini car sales suffered because of their high fuel consumption. In 1978, Lamborghini's situation worsened so much that it entered bankruptcy. Two years later, the company was purchased for $3 million by Patrick Mimran and his brother. Mimran, who was only 24 at the time, became the CEO and was later credited for being the man who saved Lamborghini. In 1981, under the leadership of Lamborghini's new owners, the Jalpa was produced. It was the last Lamborghini to use a V8 engine for a long time. The Jalpa was named once again after a famous breed of fighting bulls. It replaced the Silhouette, and although the top speed was lower and it had a higher price, the Jalpa was more successful with 420 units produced in seven years. You probably wouldn't choose Lamborghini as a go-to manufacturer if you're looking to travel across rough terrain. But did you know that Lamborghini has made several off-road trucks over the years? The LM002, also known as the Lamborghini truck or the Rambo Lambo, was made in 1986 after two prototype off-roaders had been made including the Cheetah, which was a military vehicle. The LM002 came with special Pirelli tires which could run virtually flat without risk and handle the desert heat. Two special versions of the truck participated through the tough terrains at the Dakar Rally. The 5.2-liter V12 Rambo Lambo could reach a top speed of 130 miles per hour and accelerate to 60 in 8.5 seconds. 300 units were made, costing $65,000. Fun fact, the first LM002 was delivered to the King of Morocco. Another fun fact, the truck featured in several movies, including The Fast and Furious. With the arrival of the 1990s came a new era for Lamborghini, the era of supercars that were capable of speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour. It started with the Lamborghini Diablo that was powered by a 5.7 liter V12 engine. The Diablo could hit 202 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. 
Over the course of 11 years, 900 units were made. The most expensive Lamborghini before the Diablo was the LM002 that had a price tag of $65,000. The Diablo was more than three times as expensive as it was sold for a whopping $200,000. The Lamborghini Diablo SV followed in 1995 and improved upon the speed of the Diablo, which makes sense since SV stands for Super Veloce, or Super Fast in English. It maxed out at 208 miles per hour and went from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. It was also more expensive with a price tag of almost $230,000. Not content with those figures, Lamborghini then made the Diablo GTR as a track-ready model with power improvements, a stripped interior, and a reduction in weight. It pushed 210 miles per hour and had a 0-60 to 60 time of 3.4 seconds. Only 32 GTRs were made and were sold for over $300,000. The Diablo lineup became super successful. Almost 3,000 units were sold across the world. Fun fact, the name Diablo means devil in Spanish. In 1998, Ferdinand Pieca, the chairman of the Volkswagen Group, went on a buying spree purchasing Lamborghini, Bentley, and Bugatti. Lamborghini was bought for around $110 million and placed under parent company Audi, which is also owned by Volkswagen. Fun fact, currently the Volkswagen Group owns 12 huge car brands. That is just unbelievable. The Murcielago was introduced as a coupe in 2001 and served as the flagship V12 of Lamborghini's lineup. It was the first model made under the new ownership of German parent company Audi. The Murcielago had a 6.2 liter V12 and performed similarly to the Diablo, but its look made it a favorite of many. It's probably why almost 4,000 of them were made with a starting price of $273,000. Fun fact. The Murcielago Roadster was driven by Bruce Wayne in Batman Begins, which is a very clever nod to the superhero because Murcielago is the Spanish word for bat. Following the success of the Murcielago, Lamborghini came out with the Gallardo. Powered by a 5-liter V10 that could reach a top speed of 192 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. To own one yourself would have cost at least $180,000 when they were first released. In total, over 7,000 original Gallardos were produced. In 2005, the Gallardo Super Leggero was unleashed. It was lighter than the original model due to the use of carbon fiber parts. It maxed out at 196 miles per hour and could go from 0 to 60 in just 3.8 seconds. 618 units were produced and it cost $50,000 more than the original. The fastest of the Gallardo range, though, was the LP564, which was also used by the Italian authorities to patrol highways. It had a 5.2-liter V10, and with a top speed of 202 miles per hour, you'd have a hard time outrunning the Italian police. It could reach 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds and was sold for $198,000. The Gallardo, with all its variants, became the best-selling Lamborghini model. Throughout its production run, more than 14,000 Gallardos were built. The Reventon is a limited-edition masterpiece that was first revealed at the 2007 Frankfurt Motor Show. With a design inspired by the very latest aeronautics, this sleek, swift machine was named after a bull who killed a matador, with the word Reventon meaning small explosion or burst in Spanish. It was the first Lambo to utilize a 6.5-liter V12 engine that could reach a top speed of 205 miles per hour. It could accelerate to 60 in just 3.3 seconds. In total, only 21 units were made, including one for the Lamborghini Museum. In 2009, a Roadster version was unveiled, and Lamborghini produced another 15 units of the Reventon Roadster. The Reventon became the first Lamborghini to be priced at more than $1 million. And if that wasn't expensive enough, the Roadster version was sold for $2.1 million. Come on, for this amount of money, you can buy yourself a luxury villa. In 2008, Lamborghini unveiled a four-door sports car, the Estoka. Just imagine someone bringing their kids to school with this beast. It could reach a top speed of 211 miles per hour, making it the fastest Lamborghini so far. Production plans for the Estoka were canceled, so only one unit was built. In 2009, Lamborghini made a special version of the Murcielago, the Murcielago SV. Using a 6.5-liter V12 engine, it broke the three-second barrier for 0 to 60 miles per hour. 
It did not only become the quickest Lamborghini so far, but also the fastest with a top speed of 213 miles per hour. Only 186 units were made, and it was launched with a price tag of $450,000. In 2011, one of the most iconic Lamborghinis of all time was born, the Aventador. This beautifully designed car has phenomenal performance due to its new 12-cylinder engine with 700 horsepower. It could reach a top speed of 217 miles per hour, making it the fastest Lamborghini at the time. The Aventador could accelerate from 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and cost $380,000. More than 5,000 units of the original Aventador were built between 2011 and 2017. Fun fact! Many editions and special versions of the Aventador were made, including the Aventador J, of which only one was made in 2012. It sold for $2.8 million. A Lamborghini with another very high price tag at launch, but of which more than one was made, was the Sesto Elemento. It cost $2.2 million upon release in 2011. With a 5.2-liter V10 motor, it was capable of a blistering 221 miles per hour and could do 0 to 60 in only 2.5 seconds. 20 Sesto Elementos were made in total, with the name referring to the sixth element of the periodic table, which you chemists out there will know is carbon. Why carbon? Because of the carbon fiber used throughout the car, of course. The chassis, body, drive shaft, and suspension components were all made of carbon fiber, which reduced the car's overall weight to 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. This made it the lightest, fastest, and quickest Lamborghini so far. For the company's own 50th anniversary in 2013, Lamborghini made a concept car called the Egoista, it had a unique one-seat cockpit, similar to that of a modern fighter jet. The Egoista used the same V10 engine as the Sesto Elemento, but its performance was slightly less. If you want to see the Egoista for yourself, you can, in the Lamborghini Museum. Fun fact, the car's striking exterior was made to resemble a certain animal. Care to take a guess which? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a B and ends with an L. Lamborghini's most expensive model, and one of the most expensive production cars in the world, was the Lambo Veneno. It cost an insane $4 million, and nowadays it's valued at more than double that amount. Veneno translates to poison in English, and predictably, it was named after one of the most aggressive fighting bulls ever seen. Based on the Aventador, the Veneno was developed to celebrate Lamborghini's 50th anniversary. The Veneno was the company's fastest car, capable of 221 miles per hour, and it accelerated from 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Only 14 units were made, of which 5 were coupes and 9 were roadsters. Fun fact, in 2014, a Lamborghini Veneno Roadster was sold at an auction for over $8 million. In 2014, Lamborghini unveiled their first hybrid electric model, the Asterion. The goal of the Asterion was to significantly reduce CO2 emissions using new technologies. The car was named after a Minotaur, which is a half-man, half-bull creature from the Greek mythology. The 5.2-liter V10 engine combined with three electric motors delivers a total power of 910 horsepower, enough for a top speed of 198 miles per hour and acceleration of 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Only one Asterion was ever built. The next Lamborghini vehicle to be produced in large quantities and a model that is still in production today is the Huracan. Any guesses what the name translates to and what creature it got its name from? If you said hurricane and a bull, give yourself a pat on the back. Huracan was known for its courage and you have to be equally courageous to drive one of these. The 5-liter V10 engine will power you to 212 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds. In terms of recent Lambos, its launch price of less than $300,000 was fairly modest.
In 2015, Lamborghini built the Aventador SV. While it had the same top speed as the original Aventador, it could accelerate even quicker, reaching 60 miles per hour in just 2.4 seconds, making it the quickest Lamborghini. Of course, you had to pay a price for that, as the launch price was close to half a million dollars. One year later came the Aventador S. It is characterized by a new aerodynamic design, redeveloped suspension, increased power, and new driving dynamics. While this all sounds very exciting, the specifications were almost similar to the original Aventador. In 2016, the Centenario was unveiled, and 20 coupes were built as well as 20 roadsters. You can likely guess what Centenario means, but can you guess what 100-year celebration they were marking? Well, it has been 100 years since the birth of Lamborghini's founder, Ferruccio Lamborghini. He had already passed away in 1993 at the age of 76, but his legacy lives on. Performance-wise, the Centenario was very similar to the Aventador, but it did have a much higher launch price as they were sold for $2 million each. The Huracan Performante was unveiled in 2017 at the Geneva Motor Show. It was built as both a road car as well as a race car. A prototype of the Performante set a lap time of 6 minutes and 52 seconds on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, with Marco Mapelli behind the wheel, making it one of the world's fastest production cars on the track. The Performante had a top speed of 202 miles per hour and could reach 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. Surprisingly, it had a cheaper launch price compared to the Huracan. A futuristic concept car developed in collaboration with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology was created in 2017. Each wheel contains an electric motor and all four can be controlled individually. This gives the car excellent stability, as good as a modern Formula One car in fact. The Terzo Millennio could potentially represent the electric super sports cars of the future. In 2017, the Urus was unveiled, making it Lamborghini's first SUV since the LM002 in 1986. The SUV has the soul of a sports car. While the concept version had a 5.2-liter V10, the production version is powered by a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 engine with 650 horsepower. The Urus is much lighter than most of its competitors at less than 2,200 kilograms, mainly because of the extensive usage of carbon fiber. Lamborghini also made some special variants of the Urus, including the Urus Pearl Capsule and the Urus Graphite Capsule. The Urus is capable of reaching 190 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest SUVs in the world. It can accelerate from 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds and costs $200,000. Due to its high demand, the factory was expanded and in July 2020, the 10,000th unit of the Urus was produced. Yet another Aventador model, the SVJ has been on sale since 2018. While we know that SV stands for Super Veloce or Super Fast, the J stands for Jota, denoting its track and performance superiority. In 2017, Lamborghini claimed the fastest Nürburgring lap time for a production car with 6 minutes and 45 seconds. Its performance stats are almost identical to the original Aventador, but the SVJ is lighter and more track-focused. Production was limited to 900 units, each costing about a half million dollars. The SC18 Alston is a one-off track-focused supercar in close collaboration with Lamborghini's motorsport division, Squadra Course. With a 6.5-liter V12, the car is able to reach a top speed of 218 miles per hour and go from 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Since there was only one built, it is rumored that it had been sold for around $7 million. In 2019, the Lamborghini unveiled the Hurricane Evo, with Evo standing for Evolution. It has a new design improved for aerodynamics and includes a next-generation V10. Its performance is similar to that of the Performante model and has a price tag of $260,000. By now, that almost sounds like a cheap Lamborghini. One of the most recent Lamborghinis is the Sion FKP37. Sion is a Balinese term which refers to a flash of lightning, symbolic of the car's electric capabilities. While FKP37 stands for Ferdinand Carl Peach and his birth year 1937. The beautiful design of the car is inspired by the Lamborghini Countach. The Sion combines a V12 engine with electric power making it a hybrid super sports car. 
The Sion is one of the fastest Lamborghinis with a top speed of 220 miles per hour and an acceleration time of 2.8 seconds. It will be a limited series of just 63 units, referring to the starting year of Lamborghini, which was 1963. Each will cost about $2 million. Fun fact, Lamborghini and Lego partnered to produce the Lego Technic Lamborghini Sion, a 3,696 piece, one to eight scale model of the hybrid super sports car. Lamborghini also partnered with Ducati to produce a motorcycle in the same design, which will be limited to 630 units. In 2020, Lamborghini produced another hurricane, named the STO. It is a road-approved super sports car with a 5.2-liter V10 engine. While the car looks stunning, it isn't as fast and quick as the Hurricane Performante. The STO does cost more, though. In 2021, the SC20 was released. It was engineered by the motorsport department two years after the SC18 Alston and is also a one-off track-focused supercar. How fast the SC20 will go is still a mystery, but we do know it will have a 6.5-liter V12 engine with 770 horsepower. And last, but definitely not least, is the return of a legend, the Countach. The Countach LPI 800-4 will be released in 2022. It is a modern recreation of the original Countach from 1974. The 2022 Countach also offers modern features such as the most advanced chassis technology. The car can reach a top speed of 221 miles per hour, which is much faster than the original that could go to 187 miles per hour. The 6.5 liter V12 is electrically assisted and generates 802 horsepower. This allows the hypercar to go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 2.7 seconds. The 2022 Countach is limited to just 112 units with a base price of $2.5 million. All cars have already been sold out. Throughout the years, Lamborghini has evolved immensely. The company has created some of the most iconic, wanted, and most expensive cars and is known as one of the best luxury car brands in the world. It is hard to believe that it all started with tractors. <laughs>